This weekend, we're covering everything from the NCAA to the World Indoor Tour. 2023 just keeps on rolling with amazing performances, and this weekend was no different. Check out the live recap I did of the Dr. Sander Invitational at the Armory in New York City, as there were some amazing sprint and jump highlights there. But this weekend, we'll be taking a look at everything that went down around the world. So let's jump right into it. Now for me, arguably the best story of the weekend was Aaliyah Hobbs in that 60 meter dash. 6.98 seconds down in Arkansas is not a mark you can easily overlook. What I love about Hobbs is she's dealt with so many setbacks and really seems to finally have caught her stride in the past two to three years or so. 6.98 seconds makes her number nine in history, world history, and is the number three American ever, only behind Gail Devers and Marion Jones. In my opinion, Hobbs is probably the best 100 meter runner in the United States right now. Not only factoring in this performance, but also she was a top American in the 100 meters at Worlds and actually beat out Sharika Jackson, Marie-Jose Talou, and a couple other ladies at the Lausanne Diamond League last year. The way that she is running right now and the direction that women in the world are going, I think a low 10.7 would not be out of the question for Hobbs in 2023. Now, Dino Asher Smith also ran the 60 meter dash, but at the World Indoor Tour in Germany, and she ran a national record of 6.04 seconds. That makes her number three in the world this year, only behind Hobbs and Julian Alfred. But more importantly, this is gonna have some huge implications for 2023. Asher Smith has personal bests of 10.83 and 21.88 in the 100 and 200 respectively. Considering how much faster women have gotten over the past three or so years, these are times that may only have you on the outside looking in when we're talking about global medals. If Astra Smith is improving her speed in the 60 meters, that will very likely translate outdoors and keep her competitive with the rest of the world. I personally think that 21.7 or even better is very likely in the cards for 2023 if Astra Smith keeps up this momentum. Next, let's move over to the men's side where we saw Makai Williams light up the track. He competes for Oregon and he ran a time of 6.49 seconds in that 60 meter dash. That's just a hundredth of a second off his personal best of 6.48 seconds, which he ran twice in 2022. But this of course bodes well for the rest of the year. Though he is a 2021 NCAA indoor champion at 60 meters, he unfortunately false started at the 2022 indoor championships and only finished seventh place in the 100 meters outdoors. If he is back in the 6-4 range, getting his footing again and focusing on the win, we can not only see more fast times, but a lot of consistency from Williams in 2023. I do want to say though that even though this is an amazing performance and NCAA lead, the men's 60 meter dash is absolutely stacked. So Williams will have a lot of company at nationals, even if he runs a new personal best this year. Up to the 200 meter dash, we saw LSU's Favreau Feely at the Razorback invite just opening up her season and she dropped an insanely fast time of 22.53 seconds to take the win over Florida's Talitha Diggs. Well, why was this time insane? Well, it's her third fastest performance ever. And the two times she ran faster, 22.50 and 22.46, were at the 2022 SEC and NCAA championships respectively. So running a time this fast, this early, almost certainly means she'll be dropping something very serious. Remember, she was second place in the 200 meters behind Steiner last year, but now that Abby Steiner is a pro, Ophelia is likely the favorite for the 200 meter NCAA title. Speaking of Steiner, Abby Steiner was actually also at the Razorback invite, but running her second 400 meter dash of the year. She took the win just barely ahead of Shamir Little in 50.59 seconds, just ahead of Little's 50.64. Look out for a full video soon highlighting Shamir Little specifically and the amazing but kind of overlooked past few years that she's been having in her career. But this bowls insanely well for Steiner. She of course is one of the top 200 meter runners in the United States right now, along with Gabby Thomas, Tamara Clark, and a couple others. But she is still a step behind some of the other women who are clear front runners for world championship and Olympic medals when we're talking about global 200 meter sprinting. Improving her 400 meter strength and speed endurance will likely be key to bringing her over that barrier and potentially making it onto the medal stand at the world championships this year. In addition, I also want to quickly shout out Nicole Jurgen, Talitha Diggs, Anna Hall, and Amber Anning, who all ran sub 51.6 at the Arkansas Invitational as well. 
Jurgen from Great Britain is especially notable as her 51.02 is a personal best by a full second. And it's actually close to her outdoor personal best of 50.96 seconds. So keep an eye out for Jurgen outdoors this season as well. On the men's side, this was probably my second favorite performance of the weekend after Hobbs, Christopher Billy in the men's 400 meter dash. Now, Billy competes for Arkansas and dropped a massive personal best of 45.09 seconds. That improved his personal best by almost three seconds and now makes him number 14 in NCAA history. Anytime someone runs low 45, that is a serious time to really take note of. He is now very much on the cusp of running anything between 44.9 and 44.7 indoors, maybe even better. And after that, who knows what he'll be capable of outdoors. Definitely keep a lookout for Bailey as we progress through 2023. On to the hurdles, which on the women's side has arguably been the event of the year. But Jamaica's Akira Nugent, who now runs for Arkansas, dropped a 7.88 personal best in the 60 meter hurdles. That brought her up to number 11 all time in NCAA history and pushes the conversation of who will eventually win the NCAA title this year. Now, it's easy to say that Masai Russell will run away with the title considering her NCAA record of 7.75 seconds that she just set last week, but the hurdles are seriously stacked, and I really don't think anyone is an absolute runaway clear favorite at this point, but Nugent is keeping her name in that conversation as one who can really steal that NCAA title when we get to March. Let's finish off with some field events where I already spoke about Jeremiah Davis and his 8.21 NCAA and world lead. So check out the last video where I covered his jump. But on the women's side, Ruth Usoro, who competes for Nigeria, previously represented Texas Tech. She actually might have one more season of outdoor eligibility. I need to check on that, but she jumped a world lead of 6.87 meters in the long jump. This is a very, very significant performance as it's not only a personal best indoors, but also surpasses her outdoor personal best of 6.78 meters as well. Usoro is one of the best in the world in both the long and the triple jump. So to start off her season with a performance like this is no joke. I think she has 15 meter potential in the triple jump. And now that she's clearly showing seven meter potential in the long jump, we should definitely keep a lookout for how the 2023 season pans out for Usoro. Now, in the women's triple jump, Lidamis Povea of Cuba was out at the World Indoor Tour in Germany and jumped a world lead of 14.67 meters. Not only a world lead, an indoor personal best, but also one of her best jumps overall, indoors or out. She was fifth place at the Tokyo Olympics, but unfortunately didn't make it out of the qualifying rounds at the Oregon World Championships. So time will tell if she's able to make a go for the podium this year, but Povia does have a personal best of 14.93 meters. So she is absolutely in medal contention with some of the other top ladies. So those were just some of the top performances from this weekend in the NCAA, from the pros, overseas. Of course, there is no way that I could have caught all of them. So as always, go in the comments below. Let me know not only your favorite result from the weekend, but anything notable that I definitely might have missed. And again, be sure to check out the Dr. Sander Invitational recap that I just put out this past weekend. Some amazing performances that went down at the Armory. Be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. We'll be back again next time. Thanks for watching.